Welcome to this USD Bioinformatics course on Bioinformatics Applications. This figure represents a synopsis of Bioinformatics Applications. There are many applications of Bioinformatics including Biology, Chemistry, Pharmacology, and many others. Within this figure we can see that we have the Informatics core in the middle and the disciplines on the outside. The goal of Bioinformatics is to connect the core uses and tools with the surrounding disciplines. The tools and data manipulation are unique to each of the applied disciplines. This unique interaction is displayed as the ad hoc interface. This is another depiction of a bioinformatics synopsis. It helps to show bioinformatics as an integrative tool. Using bioinformatics, we can process and store information in a way that is beneficial to the objectives of our work. The manipulation of this information and the creation of models is what makes bioinformatics essential to modern sciences. Data manipulation is an important application of bioinformatics. Data manipulation includes the collection, storage, analysis, and creation of information helpful to a particular question. Some examples of data manipulation include molecular online tools and the bioextract server. The bioextract server is useful for accessing biomolecular data from many sources for many purposes. This is a lab template for the proper accession and usage of online molecular tools such as bioextract. The context at the top describes a certain real biological problem and its given hypothesis. The objectives of the study are shown in the specification and aims section. The red colored section describes a plan or process to solve the problem presented in the context. This lab is useful for understanding the importance of bioinformatics data manipulation. The next section is the transition between data manipulation and model creation. Biostatistics plays an important role in understanding and predicting the outcomes of the systems under question. Using data from microarray and PCR, gene expression can be analyzed using biostatistics. Models could then be built upon the knowledge gained from the statistics. This figure shows a new method for solving complex systems biology questions. It is a flowchart of steps that can be used to understand gene expression and analyze the interactions on individual levels. The information produced can then be used to run statistical analysis in order to gain a better understanding of the whole scheme. As mentioned before, data manipulation can lead to modeling. Statistics, a crucial data manipulation tool, gives way to predictions. Models can be built to show the behavior or structures of a specific system in order to make predictions. Models can come from two origins. They can come from analyzing data or analyzing systems and interactions. In all cases, the models must be supported by their respective biological systems. One example is modeling the interaction of food nutrients within the body. Bioinformatics can be used to assess and capture these interactions. In terms of health science or nutrigenomics, nutrient interactions with DNA, RNA, and proteins can be modeled using recorded data or basing a model off of a known interaction. In this case, structural or data models can be produced. In a particular system, it is possible to break down the system into individual components. It is easier to understand and calculate smaller components than large complex ones. Folate mediate one carbon metabolism is an example of this. The depiction on the top left illustrates the folate pathway. This large pathway is composed of many small steps. Each of these steps can be formulated into a differential equation as shown in the top right box. Now we have a list of equations that represents the components of a system. A larger equation must be created that integrates the smaller component equations. Using the overall equation, we can see if the data matches the equation model, and if so, we can begin to input different data to make predictions about the system. This is shown by the bottom two graphs. Some common models for bioinformaticians to build are drug DNA interaction models. Drug DNA interaction models are important to understand. This is because the negative effects of such interactions can cause mutations within the germline of an individual, meaning their offspring could inherit this negative effect. In bioinformatics, the drug molecules can be prepared virtually. They can now be tested within a model, or in silico, that shows the possible interactions between the drug and a created protein, RNA, or DNA molecule. These types of models help to reduce human and animal testing and help to predict possible undesirable interactions. Some examples of great new biotechnology models include Zygote Body, sponsored by Google, and eCell by Keough University Institute for Advanced Biosciences. These models serve an abundant number of purposes, including education. 
Zygote body on the left is a human anatomy simulation model. This model allows a user to view distinct layers of the human body as well as individual parts such as a singular muscle or organ. All of this is accomplished in a 3D context with rotational motion available. E-cell is a model that tries to make precise whole cell simulation at the molecular level possible. This model shows simulating molecular interactions and structure again in a 3D rotational context. Another useful type of model that applies directly to the medical field are cancer tumor development models. These are designed to show the growth and spread of cancer under the chosen conditions. These models can also be made to show how a cancer tumor resists chemical treatment. A tumor consists of two kinds of cells, stem cells, shown in blue, and transitory cells, shown in all other colors. During mitosis, a stem cell can divide either asymmetrically or symmetrically. In asymmetric mitosis, one of the two daughter cells remains a stem cell, replacing its parent, so a stem cell effectively never dies. The transitory cells stop dividing at a certain age and change color from red to white to black, eventually dying. A stem cell may also divide symmetrically into two stem cells. In this example, the second stem cell moves to the right. This activity in which the cell advances into distant sites and creates another tumor colony is called metastasis. The created model incorporates all of these relationships into a viewable and predictive system. Epidemiologists use bioinformatics models as well. Our last example models epidemiology inquiries. HIV or other diseases can be modeled to show how it will spread or subside under certain conditions. With this model, we can simulate the spread of the human immunodeficiency virus via sexual transmission through a small, isolated human population. It therefore illustrates the effects of certain sexual practices across a population. Green people represent uninfected humans, red are infected, and blue are unknown. When activated, this model will show red people infecting other individuals. Other factors can be changed within the model, such as the relation periods and population size. This is the end of our bioinformatics course. Thank you for listening to USD Bioinformatics on bioinformatics applications.